Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to cover all of the playoff predictor cards and the ones that you want to pay attention to to A, make some coins near the end of the year or maybe snag yourself a end game card that you can use for the rest of the year for a very discounted price. So we're going to break down how the playoff predictor cards work as well as which ones I think you should go after and which ones you should avoid. All right, so you will see the timer up in the top left still. This video is being recorded live on stream as I have been streaming for 52 hours and I've got another 33 to go. So no! If you want to come hang out during my subathon, twitch.tv slash no sleeps 12. All right, so EA on Friday did release on top of the EU team of the season. We also got playoff predictor cards, and if you haven't been playing Hockey Ultimate Team the last few years, you might not know how they work. They have been around for a few years now. I think this might be the third year. How they work, you will predicting which teams will finish in certain spots in the standings. So a brief overview would be... If a team does not make the postseason at all, so they are just completely out, they are the Buffalo Sabres, the San Jose Sharks, the New Jersey Devils, all right? They will be a 91 overall card. Whatever playoff predictor they have, so in this case for Buffalo, would be Alex Tuck. He would be stuck at a 91. That's it. That's all. That's the card you're going to get. Now, if they finish first to third in the division, they will bump up to a 93, a little bit easier pr to predict. Now, the wild card spot... Whoever is in the two wildcard spots in the East and Western Conference, whatever players are on those teams that they are representing, they go all the way up to 98s, and obviously at 98 overall in this game, uh, everything is essentially 99. And the reason why the, the wildcard spots get the bump to 98 is because it is a lot harder to predict. And again, every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time with the new content rolls, whatever teams are in the wildcard spot for that week, all the way up to the final when the playoffs begin, those cards will go up to 98 and they will fluctuate. So if a team jumps into a wild card spot on Wednesday night, on Thursday throughout all the, the entire next week, they will be 98 overalls. So this does matter if you are competing in, let's say, GWC, for example. So this Thursday, you will see the first 98s take place. But I'm going to point out the ones that I think that you should go after because there are some cards that are clearly going to make either the wild card spot or have a strong chance to get there. So let's get over the, let's go and take a look at the cards I want you guys to pay attention to. All right, guys, so again, if a team does not make the postseason, they don't get in the top three spots in the division or in the wild card, the players that they have for the playoff predictor will be stuck at 91, so I will take from my Sharks because, yet again, they will not make the playoffs. The 91 at Nicholas Malosh, this is the card. This is where he. This is what he's going to finish at. This is what he's going to be. The 91s, guys, I'm not going to lie, none of them are worth just investing in. Even if you've just started playing the game, you're kind of messing around, I think that there's just far better cards and everything's going to keep crashing in terms of the market. So make sure uh, the 91s you can just avoid. And like I said, I'm going to show you the ones that I think are the only ones that really matter still. Unless you are trying to build a theme team, guys. This is the time, I think, and I would recommend just build your favorite players, build theme teams, all of that. But if you want to make sure that you get the highest end cards and you can really make some coins still, uh, these are the ones you want to pay attention to. All right, we're going to start first with the no-brainer. So the Eastern Conference playoff race is actually extremely boring because it's essentially been locked up for about three weeks already, and it's really not going to change in terms of the eight teams that are going to compete for the Stanley Cup in the Eastern Conference. But specifically in this event, Lars Eller is by far the safest card to go out and get to be a 98 overall. And in the auction house right now, I don't know if no one's paying attention or maybe they don't care. He's going for like 170,000 coins on PlayStation. And he is, like I said, guaranteed essentially to be a 98. And the reason why he is guaranteed is that he is the Washington Capitals are in the second wild card spot right now. They are 13 points up on the New York Islanders who are in ninth spot. So that would take an all-time collapse for that to happen. Now, the other danger would be that Lars Ellers goes and the Washington Capitals go up and into the top three in the division. The issue with that is that they have only, they've got 14 games to go, Washington does. They've got 84 points, and they are eight back of Pittsburgh. So again, that would be a huge collapse from Pittsburgh, and Washington would have to win out or, or really put some pressure on for that to happen. So Lars Eller is by far the safest. If you see him for like under 200K, you're getting a 99 overall card that has gold quick draw. He's 6'1", and it will be a good center. So just keep that in mind, guys. I think this is an absolute no-brainer if you are trying to get the best cards for this event. All right, currently the other wild card spot is being held down by the Boston Bruins, and their representative for this event is the 91 Matt Grizzly. 5'11", left-handed defenseman, does have gold shutdown and pretty good stats right now in terms of skating. Like, 
this is a safe one if you wanted to just use the card. Um, maybe you maybe you don't have a very good team still, and you're trying to learn the game. He's he's going for less than a hundred thousand coins, and I think they have the strongest chance to land in that first wild card spot. But they are only two points back of both Toronto and the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're all tied at sixty eight games. So we're gonna take a look at those other teams as well. But just my own personal preference or my own personal, um, you know, prediction, I guess, would be that Boston finishes in that that other wild card spot. I think Toronto and Tampa just both have better teams. Memes aside about Toronto, um, but I just think that um, those other teams are going to finish in the division and not be in the wild card spot. But who knows? This is obviously a much more dangerous investment as opposed to Lars Eller, who's locked in to that wild card spot. From the Toronto Maple Leafs, their representative is the 91. David Camp has gold, no contest, silver, quick draw, is six foot two, and a pretty good and pretty good stats all the way around. Um, he will be up to no lower than a 93. Toronto is going to make the playoffs again, whether they get out of the first round. That is a whole other situation, but they are guaranteed to at least go up to a 93. So this isn't a bad centerman at all, especially with silver, quick draw. I would suspect that they don't collapse and fall into a wild card spot. So uh, this one I probably would avoid, but who knows? And then we've got the Tampa Bay Lightning rep in the 91 Jan Ruda. And this one's a lot more interesting because he's a six foot three right handed defenseman that has gold shut down. Very good card for you. At 93, would get to about 90 speed as well. Obviously, nothing crazy at this stage of the game. But again, if you're looking for a decent defenseman for you, you don't have a max team, you're still trying to learn the ropes, maybe preparing and just trying to get things under control for next year, this is going to be a decent card no matter what. If they do fall into the wild card spot, this is going to be a nuts right-handed defenseman for you at 98 overall. All right, and then on to the Western Conference. This is a lot more messy than the Eastern Conference. So currently in the first wild card spot is the Nashville Predators. The 91 Matias Zekholm is the rep. Six foot four with 90 speed and acceleration and gold shutdown and stick him up. This is a phenomenal defenseman card. If you're still competing in the GWC and come this Thursday, he gets up and they're still in the wild card spot. This is a great, great card for you. Um, a 98 overall left-handed defenseman at six foot four with both of these zone abilities. That being said, they are four points back of Minnesota, or sorry, St. Louis, with the same amount of games played. Um, so obviously, they are. It looks like they will be stuck here in the wild card spot for the next little while. If they finish there, I'm not really sure. Uh, again, they would have to kind of keep stepping it up. And I'm not a huge believer in the Nashville Predators. I think they've been really carried by uh, Soros as well as. Um, as well as Yossi, who's having an incredible year. And, I mean, I guess a resurgence from Duchesne, who's been wild, obviously, because, obviously, with the Evo card, that has a lot to do with it, I think. And the second wild card spot goes to the Dallas Stars, currently the 91 Denis Gurionov, who would be a great, uh, big, huge left-handed winger for you if he does stick at 98 overall. The problem with Dallas is that I don't really have a lot of faith that they're going to make the wild card because one point back of them is Vegas. However, Dallas does have three games in hand. I would still just be so blown away if Vegas somehow doesn't make the playoffs here. And then you've got Winnipeg, who's a little bit further back. They're about five points back. But it's Vegas, who I just... I, I'm not a huge believer in Dallas. We'll see. Um, they definitely have games in hand. It is it is somewhat safe, but I just have a weird feeling about Vegas catching Dallas. We'll have to wait and see. If this does finish at 98, this is a really, really good card. The 91 Nolan Patrick from the Vegas Golden Knights with gold quick draw and unstoppable force, which is pretty nice. I do think Vegas does make the playoffs, and even if they get up to 90, uh, you know, into the into the top three, if they can catch Edmonton, they're three points back of Edmonton. Edmonton only has a game in hand, but they're only one point back of Dallas. Obviously, again, Dallas has some games, but we'll have to wait and see because even though they do have more games in hand, that doesn't mean they're guaranteed wins. Um, if this is a 98 overall card, this is a great centerman as well with uh, really good abilities here. So you got to be watching out for Vegas. Um, I would I would bet that they end up as the other wild card spot. So this might be a decent investment for you. So, guys, those are the ones that I think you need to pay attention to. The other ones, the, obviously, the playoff teams that get into the 93, those are going to be decent cards like Brian Dumoulin. But, uh, again, it's six foot four with uh, off, off the rush doesn't even look like it works in this game. But Silver Shutdown is nice, and he is big-bodied. But still, it's at this point, there's so many high-end cards, and the market has completely crashed that you can get way better cards that are probably going to end up being cheaper anyways. So the ones that I discussed so far in this video, those are the ones I think you should pay attention to. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below and please subscribe if you haven't already i'll see you next time have a good one